uh, Jamie from the Poodle Club again. Uh, this is Lola. Lola is a standard poodle. Um, she gets done every probably 12 weeks. Um, ideally, we do say every four to six weeks for grooming your poodle. Um, but Miss Lola comes in every um, around, roughly about 12 weeks and she's a sweetheart. She goes into a really short kennel clip. They like her extra short. So I do her with a number seven all over, um, which I call a kennel clip. Um, she does have a top, top knot, fluffy ears and fluffy tail. Um, okay, so firstly, I always do their feet first. So um, once again, I use the um, Wild KM5 um, corded clippers. I find them really comfortable in my hand. I'm using a 10 wide tooth blade. Um, a lot of people probably don't like using these. I do, especially on my big, big standard poodle feet. This is what I like to use. So I just quickly, Skim over the top. Oh, grass seeds. Um, skim over the top of Lola's feet. Let's make sure that it is stuck in there. So what I'll do is I'll get some forceps. Sometimes if they're um, just sitting there, you can pull them out. But that one seems to be quite in there a bit so I pull that out and I think there's a I reckon there is another good girl baby yeah. so obviously this time of the year this is why it's a good idea to keep your poodle's feet short all the time is because as you can just see grass seeds you don't want them growing up and traveling all the way up their leg and causing lots of issues cost you a lot of money at the vets and obviously it's not good for the dog so once again i'm just separating more grass seeds separating the whoops, whoops. once again i'm just uh, separating by my fingers underneath and i can push the pads and separate those toes just getting the bulk of the hair off of lola A foot full of grass seeds, Miss Lola, haven't you? Hey, foot full of grass seeds. Just getting most of that off. I'll tidy that up later. Once again, the next foot. Spreading out those toes from underneath. When she comes back after being dried, washed and dried. Do sit down, baby? Sit down. Good girl. Sit down. As a good girl. Always check your blades to make sure they're not getting hot. We're just going to swap dries again. Um, okay. Always check your blades. Um, if they're hot on your hand, they're hot on the dog. Um, I'm just swapping over now to a smaller 10 blade um, for Lola's face. Around. Some people, she, she's usually pretty good. She might lie down for me. Good girl. Okay, so she's really hairy as you can see. So I've lost the line. Um, it's not as easy as what was on Bridget this morning. So it's from the top of your ear, around about there, to the corner of your eye. You want a line. Um, don't pull up high, because your line's gonna go like this. Um, especially so on your show dogs and that sort of thing. You don't want that, that, that line being like that. So be really careful when you're putting that line in so I'm not going to pull it up I'm just going to hold it like that so that I can see what I'm doing because if I was to go like this it's going to make a really bad line 
Okay, so I'm cleaning out around that ear a bit. When I come to the corner of the eye, I just I hold the eye back a little bit to make it taut. Lola's a very, very good um, model. She's used to being really green. She's been coming to Andrew and I for many, many years. Once again, a lot of people will just go straight down. Um, I go straight from the eye to the other eye, but I always put in a little V and that will be different once. Um, I'll do that more so when she's clean. And from that corner of that eye down, I'm going to go back to this side, so the same as what we did on the other side. Just lightly hold that hair back. Good deal. Once again, I'm just getting the bulk of the hair off. We're back to the lips, so just put your finger in gently. And scoop. Keeping that blade flat, you don't want to be digging it in, because you're going to catch things. So keep it as flat as you can. Okay. Good girl. Good girl. Okay, so we're back to uh, putting in the, the rounded scoop. Um, I just guess I don't measure anything. I just do what I think looks good on the dog. So I'm going to start about here on the wall, and I'm going to go up. Um, you can make your dog's neck look longer by doing it lower. Um, some people don't like them long. Some people like them short. On um, pet dogs, it's all preference. Same as the side, I'm just going to guesstimate where I want that to go and how I want that to look. Thank you. Good girl. I'm going to make sure that I clean out all around here. Good girl. Good girl. that's a rough clip of her face now I'm going to put my seven blade on and um, like I said before her owners like her really short and by the looks of it this is good for this <laughs> this time of the year because she did have quite a few grass seeds in her so I just use my seven blade and I just start clipping away and um, she has a little bit more of a fuller neck than usual just a little bit so I'm using the uh, Yente slipper brush to groom through Lola's tail. Um, just a quick groom through, you can hear that it's catching in places. I'll run a comb through there quickly. Good girl. So I'm using oh, wrong way. the wider tooth comb from the end and just making sure there's no big knots in there before we throw her through the bath if you do come across a knot hold the hold the base I'm find that knot again so hold the base of the hair so you're not pulling I can pull out hers because I knew it was going to be fairly easy but always I hold the um so say there's a big knot there hold the bottom of that knot so that when you're actually teasing through that knot, you're not pulling on directly on their hair. Skin. Skin, they won't like it. That's pretty good. And we'll just quickly do the bit up there. Can I sit down? No, you want to stand up. So once again, just slip a start from the back of the top knot. See how it's um it's got ringlets? It's almost she's almost at the stage of getting mats. Um so as a, as a groomer, you can usually have a look and you go, hmm, starting to go curly, ringlet, ringlet tea, like it's separating and it's, and it's starting to do that. So we don't want them to look like that. Um, so yeah, you can see that they're, they're starting to form little ringlets, which then will go into big mats. So, um, She's lucky she's coming now because otherwise she might be being getting clipped off. Because I don't groom out big mats. Um, I think if people don't want to brush their dogs regular and have them groomed regular and they come in matted, um, which she's not, by the way, but if they do come in matted, I will um, clip them off. I'm just brushing through there. As you can see, those ringlets are now disappeared. 
So I should be able to put a comb through there fairly well easily. She's got a lot of dead hair. So she's probably right on the verge of, you know, nice for a brush again. if she um, was kept any any longer, she'd probably, not that I'd shave the top knot off, but same with the ears. I can feel, I can already feel that they're quite thick. Um, the more experience you get, you would be able to hold in here and go, mm, that's pretty pretty thick and it's got lots of dead hair in there. Um, and if you start feeling that on your dog at home, brush it. Once again, being very careful because we've got their, the ear leather is quite sensitive and thin. Always turn the ear this way and go this way too. Good girl, Lola. Good girl. So that's quite a bit of hair just out of their ear. Always hold the top of the ear. Just being very gentle and then flip it over. Careful not to scratch the ear with the with the brush. And that's just from that one ear because I just cleaned it out before. So as you can see, this is what collects in their coat and this is what's going to cause your matting. This dead hair doesn't fall out. It needs to be brushed out and it needs to be removed. You should be brushing at least once a week. Right. Just okay. going to have a look in um, Lola's ears. They're not too bad or they're a bit hairy. Yeah. So I um sorry we just got interrupted. We had a customer arrive, but anyway. So we're just trying to show the camera what we're doing here. So you can go pretty well deep inside. The ear canal is actually on a um L. Like it's you can't burst the eardrum or you can't. um all this is gonna be clipped off too, just around the ear. So they air out, you know, if you know, I get poodles that come in that have nasty, nasty ear infections and I suggest they shave the whole ear. Shave it off, it's, it's letting the air in. Um, so, yeah. But some breeders suggest you shouldn't do it or recommend you shouldn't do it. So, once again, personal preference. Alrighty. Uh, okay, Lola's had her bath and her blow dry, so she's looking a bit better. Um, certainly cleaner. So, I'm just going to quickly slip her through her. So, I'm just using the um, Tender Care Lawrence slipper just to slip her through her. Brushing up all the hair, all in an upwards direction. Once again, careful not to scrape the skin. Up you get. Then I'm using my comb, um, the smaller um, teeth, just combing through Lola, so that we have a perfect, not free to work with. Alrighty. Can't see your face, can we Lola? Alright. Okay, so now I'm going to clip her feet with my um, KM5. That's what I used um, before her bath. She's still got quite a bit of hair on there. As you know, I just skim over quickly before I bath them. So I'm just slowly separating her toes 
and getting in there. This is the webbing here you don't want to catch, so you can see my finger under there, just be very careful. Down the side of the toenail, now she's a bit touchy on this nail because this nail has been broken or something. So I'll do that around there with the 40 because that looks a bit yucky. And then what I do is I get my 40. Big <clears throat> girl. Just going to go gently around this one. Trying to. Okay, do you want to turn this way, babe? Good girl, stand up. Oh yeah, stand up. There's a good girl. So then on the back of the feet, I always use the 40. Um, I think it's better. We're cleaning all that out. Scooping on one side, scooping on this next side, and then I spread a little bit and go down the middle. Carefully not to catch any of their webbing. And then I can see better from the back here, so the bits that were sticking out the front, I can see better when I lift her foot up and I can get all that out from the back of her foot. Now I always turn it over again. This one is a little bit dodgy. I don't want to play around too much because you can see her nails exposed there. She must have knocked that one or something. And then I just tidy up any bits on the front. So there's a tidy clipped foot. And then I'll do that with the rest of them. So put the pen blade back on. Usually I wouldn't have time to put on there. So I've got a small table that comes in handy, um, especially if dogs um, that come in regular and used to it because they don't even budge when I when I move the table. So do you want to come back this side? So we're just doing the next foot. So now um, I've got my seven blade again. So we're just going to re-clip Lola. Always running this way. Don't ever run this way. Um, I think I said that earlier. Um, always clip down, clip down the body. Always keeping the clipper blade flat. Always push the flank out a little bit. It's very um, floppy and what's the word? Easy to catch. Easy to catch here. Yeah. Lifting the leg up gently, ever so gently under the armpit. Oh, 
always keep checking those blades, even if it's not a face feet and tail blade, like a, a, a ten blade. You don't want to be um, having it hot at all on them. Um, oh. <clears throat> so I'm just going to skim down here because I will scissor in a lot of that. A friend way back taught me that. It wasn't actually Angela, a friend that I used to work for. She was taught by another friend. So to leave, leave them full and chisel them in so they don't look like chicken legs, even though the owners want them looking short. Um, we do this so they don't look too bold. want them short I'm quite happy to take them short I wouldn't take the body any shorter than a seven like I wouldn't do it with a ten or a fifteen um, a seven is the shortest I will go um, obviously Lola is around lots of grass and with grass seeds and gets lots of things caught on her coat so I don't see there's any issue with taking her this short um, she's had this this same trim since I've been doing her which is well over eight years I think um, so I have no, no issue with it. Um, she looks quite nice in the end. Um, it's just extra short. There you come, Mr. I will change my blade to a 10 blade because I don't want to be chopping under Lola's um, underarm with her 7, so I'm just going to scoop all that out. I think I did the other side before she went in the bath. back on um, just tidying up the tail here um, she has a slight V in there I just use for pet dogs I just use um, sight I don't measure anything I don't do anything like that I just see what looks good um, and all their bottoms be very careful and definitely make sure the blade is not hot so this is a, a fresh blade on so it's cool Alrighty. I'm going to scissor um, the little bits of uh, Laura's feet in. So just going to take that off. A little bit more time than just clipping straight down with a seven um, but I do think it you know they've got a lot of bones and a lot of kinks and holes and all sorts around their bottom of their feet 
so this sort of just makes it that little bit fuller um i know she is done with a seven blade it sounds a bit uh, silly maybe but it's just something that i do Cleaning up Lola's face now from earlier. She's using a 10 blade. I can use a 15. Obviously, um, some show people will use a 40. I use a 40 um, on Evie's um, legs, on her feet. Um, sometimes I do a 40 on Evie's face. It just depends on when the show is and when I put her. So just touching up Lola's face. Remember the um, line from the top of the ear to the corner of the eye without pulling up too much here. Keep the eye taut while you click around that. I've got a tiny V just up on the, um, the stop there. Pulling that lip out. Big girl, big girl. I'm just getting all that hair that sticks in there. If it's really gunky, some dogs get um, like little scabs and things in there. Um, you would have to use a 40 or a 15 to get that out. She's okay though. So some dogs that haven't been groomed for a very long time, yeah, it's quite nasty in there sometimes. And owners wouldn't even wouldn't even notice it, um, which is a bit unfortunate for the poodle. So once again, I'm just play it by feel and sight. Okay. Oh. Where are you? I can't see a thing. Right there. Oh, it's gone. Good. Actually, I might just take lower the smidgen lower. So I just stood back and I think, no, yeah, I'll just take it a smidgen lower. So that's what I've done. Get the paint out all there. Good girl. Her hair is growing the opposite way just here. So I am using my clippers in a different direction. I always have a good look at the teeth of my customers' dogs because if there's any issues there, I can let them know. So now I'm just going to do um, 
trim Lola's top knot. Well, not trim, I'm going to give it a good cut because it is very, very hairy. Um, so what I do first is just make sure it's all combed through nicely, which it is. And just brush forward. Get my curved scissors and I go straight across. And then I round as we go. And like I said, Lola's top knot is very overgrown, so I'm going to take quite a bit off. Um, I'll get like it. So, um, what I, yeah, so I brush forward, sorry, comb forward. Here. I do my top knots fairly short at the front. Um, a lot of people have the big top knots out this way. Um, definitely on my pets, I have it very quite short. From this is straight up. So from the top of the ear is straight up. Comb, 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 comb. Now I'm going to take a whole heap of bulk off of here. So I look from the front and I'm going like this because I'm going to make it fairly flat. Lola doesn't have a big, huge top knot. So as you can see, I'm taking quite a bit off of her top knot. most of the top knot now I'm just going to do the ears and then I'll finish the top knot again just gonna get my smaller scissors for now just to Do with Lola's ears she's um, got beautiful long ears they're not um, they're not bulky like some poodles ears are quite bulky hers aren't I do skim the tops of her ears so what I do is I get my seven blade again do 
is just on the top of the ear I just skim and I'll do the same on this side they just sit nicer I think they sit nicer behind the ear. Careful not to cut the ear. And any little bits that are popping out there. Once again, scissor behind the ear. Out. I will take a little bit of her length off just because they look a bit ratty at the bottom. So I just hold them and literally I just go across. Then she's such a little angel, she sits so still. I can see what I'm doing quite easily because she's, like I said, she's an angel. She doesn't move. She's such a little good girl. And I'll do the same on this side. Always brush underneath too. I'll just do the same. I'll go straight across. And before I tidy this one, I always look, because sometimes I don't judge very well. One will be longer than the other. That's pretty well okay. So I'm just gonna move over this way. So I hold her head straight and I look underneath, oh, is that tickly Lola? And I'll get her to sit up in a minute and I can round them off a bit more. So I'm just going to finish her top knot. So when you're doing a top knot, if Angela can just come and stand behind me, and thank you, Angela, for videoing today. Um, when you're scissoring a top knot, look at all directions. So you look from the front, and then you look on top, then you look at the back of the neck, you look at the side, you look from the side from the back, you look at the side from the top, you look at the other side. So you just always have a different view of your top knot. Because um, I'm telling you now, you'll always find bits. Bits will be longer on one side than the other side. Um, so if you're always moving and manipulating the head around to look at different um, views, you'll get a better finish. Do you want to stand up for a minute, Lol? Pop up for a minute. Beep, beep, beep. There's a good girl. I actually, I haven't finished the top knot. What I do is I'll put her on the floor in a minute and I will have a look from sitting down. Um, saw some pesky bits um, from the floor as well. So I'll just do a tail quickly. Lola, stand up. Turn around, baby. Cool girl. Good girl. What? Good girl. So just groom through the tail, comb through it. Oh, it's got a very long tail. Old saying is work with what you've got. So 
So I will just tip. There's the end of her tail there, but I'm just going to take this off here. She's got a big toilet brush. I'm going to start um, from the base and I just round. Round all the way. Turn my scissors around so you can see what I'm doing. So underneath. And all around. You can have tails as long as you like, as short as you like. You can cut the base up high, you can cut the base up low. I always go fairly high on my pets or on my clients' dogs because, um, you know, if they don't come in for a while, they get messy and um, it's no good. So I actually take them, you know, my, my own personal dogs, I have them quite short. Um, but, yeah, in the grooming salon, I do do them a bit longer. And I do them quite short around the bum. Let's give it a big shake. So that's Miss Lola in her very, very short kennel trim. She's been such a good girl. She's been such a good supermodel. Um, so that's it. Any questions, just um, put in the comments below and we'll try and answer them for you. Thanks.